<laughs> Zolkeen The Mayan Calendar is an innovative worker placement game from Czech Games Edition and designers Daniel Tashini and Simone Luciani. In Zolkeen, players are Mayan tribal leaders who are attempting to gain the favor of the gods by placing workers on the main gears on the board. It plays with two to four players in one and a half to two hours. Players start Zolkeen by assembling the board and setting the central calendar gear to one of its green food days. Everyone collects three workers and a player reference in their chosen color, and then their other workers as well as their marker tokens go on the board. The resource cubes, crystal skulls, and corn are placed on the board, and six monuments and buildings are placed face up in the lower right. Each player then gets to choose four starting wealth tokens. They choose which two they'd like to keep, immediately gain those benefits, and discard the other two. Then the starting player is chosen, and the game begins. Now, in order to place a worker on an action space, a player pays corn according to the number of that space and the number of workers being placed. If you need to place workers on your turn but you can't afford it, you can beg for corn. To beg for corn, you take up to three corn from the bank, but this angers the gods, so you will have to move down one step on one of the temple tracks. Now the starting player space is special. Whoever chooses it immediately collects all of the corn that's accumulated on the central gear, and they get their worker back at the end of the round. They may also be able to advance the calendar gear two teeth at the end of the round rather than one, but this is subject to certain restrictions. Now, at the end of the round on which the starting player space was chosen, the player who chose it gets the starting player token, or that token rotates to the left one space if the player that chose it was the starting player. Retrieving workers allows you to take the action associated with the space that they're on. Now, if you would rather have access to an action that's further back, down the same gear, you have to pay one corn per step back. Each action gear is associated with a different Mayan settlement, and it provides different advantages. Yashchilan provides a range of resources, while Palenque provides large quantities of corn and wood. To collect a resource in Palenque, you must remove one of the revealed resource tiles that's attached to your action space. Forest tiles must be cleared to reveal the corn beneath them. Now, you can burn the forest to get to the corn faster, but this will anger the gods, and you're going to move down one single temple track. Tikal lets you build monuments and buildings and gain technology. A building will give you a one-time effect, so you'll get resources or an increase in a technology track or gain the favor of one of the gods. If you purchase a farm, that will decrease the amount of corn that you have to feed your workers on a food day. Monuments don't provide an immediate bonus, but they will give you victory points at the end of the game in combination with your other buildings, your technologies, or your other resources. Now at the end of a round where a building has been built, a new one is placed on the board in its place, but monuments are not replenished. Each technology track grants you bonuses to particular gears on the board. To move up in a technology track, you pay the resource cost listed above in wood, stone, or gold. As you move up on the track, you continue to gain the bonuses from steps below. Ushmal lets players exchange corn for resources or vice versa, gain additional workers, or pay for buildings and actions on other gears in corn. Chichen Itza lets you spend a crystal skull in order to collect victory points and to gain favor in a particular temple. Each temple has a separate track and it will provide bonuses on food days as well as victory points at the end of the game. After every player has taken their turn, the calendar gear is advanced one tooth counterclockwise. If this causes a worker on one of the smaller gears to be advanced to a space that doesn't have a number on it, that worker is removed from the gear. If the starting player space wasn't chosen this round, then one corn is placed on the current tooth of the calendar gear. Four times per game, the calendar gear will reach a food day. Now, food days work like regular rounds, except that at the end, each player must pay two food per worker. Any unfed worker is going to cost you three victory points. Orange food days also grant you free resources according to your standing in each temple, while green food days give victory points instead. 
Also, the first green food day of the game triggers the start of the second age, and all of the buildings on the board are removed and replaced with better second age buildings. The second green food day triggers the end of the game, and the player with the most victory points wins. So I really like Zolkeen. It reminds me a lot of Stone Age, which is another game that I like quite a bit. Um, it has a lot of different paths to victory, which is really, really nice. So there's a lot of ways to get those victory points to win. Also, it's an incredibly easy game to learn, but very difficult to master. So it has a long shelf life, which is also good. A negative though, uh, it is rather unforgiving. So if you make a mistake early on, you could find that it's really difficult to catch up, could be a little bit frustrating in that sense. Also, I have to say, the rule book is very confusing. <laughs> it's laid out in a very confusing way, and you'll have to take a really good look through the whole thing before you start, or else you might miss a few little rules here and there. Now that unforgiving nature of Zulkeen that Joanna mentions means that this game can be really prone to analysis paralysis, because people are going to be very, very concerned about making a mistake. Another thing that might frustrate some players is the very steepness of that learning curve. There's a whole bunch to keep track of here because you've often got to divide your focus between multiple gears just to make sure that that turn where you retrieve your workers is actually profitable. Now, those gears are what make this game so unique. They add a temporal and a spatial planning component to what's otherwise a pretty standard worker placement game, and they really bring Zolkeen up above a lot of its peers with that uniqueness and that extra challenge. Another great thing about the gears is the way that they're themed. Each of them is attached to a different region and provides different resources, and that's a really nice way of incorporating the theme directly into the gameplay, which is a wonderful thing to see in a traditional Europe. 